Hello everybody, it is Michaela Nicole and welcome back to my channel. Today I have a very exciting video planned, at least exciting for me. Um, I am going to be restoring a camera I just got. Today, in this video, we're doing something very exciting. We are going to be restoring my 1930s Kodak brownie camera and it is in honor of their 30th anniversary, I mean their 50th anniversary, which occurred in the 30s. Now, this camera is pretty exciting because it was released in 1930 to any kid that was turning 12 in the year 1930 and it was given to them for free as a present from the Eastman Kodak company. So, this camera is pretty exciting and I have its counterpart which was made the decade prior um, just for some comparisons so hopefully this will be interesting it's gonna be a little different I'm gonna try and keep it kind of quiet and just kind of restore and you're gonna get a nice top-down view of the restoration so without further ado let's get started as you can see here this is the 30th anniversary camera from 1930 um the emblem of course being right there and it has pretty minor damage as you can see um right here the leatherette outer covering is coming off um but with no damage in there it's just coming unglued which is good news um we've got these couple of spots and a little scratch scuffy looking thing up there um the edges are a little banged up of course um otherwise the only there's a scuff right there as well um and aside from that you can see that things are just kind of dusty and dirty this handle um is really desperate for some help um but that is not really a project for this video um i'm just gonna kind of clean it up in this video and i may make another one where i restore some leather handles because a few of my cameras have this issue um and i have some ideas on how to fix that but i'm just not completely sure um but other than that it's in really great condition now it does have a little dent going on but essentially let me just tell you a little bit about this camera it is made of uh cardboard which compared to its sibling this key has to pop out for it to open um as opposed to its sibling next door um this one right here it is made of a metal whereas this one is cardboard um, makes sense this was the 30s this was the 20s this one this was the 30s um, but this one you've seen this in another video but it's very similar as you can see it has the same peg same uh, shutter mechanism here essentially um, but essentially the same camera I'm not gonna go into too much detail about that one you can check it out in another video but back to the anniversary camera as you can see on the inside it has this really great sticker really dates it in my opinion but I love it um, back here where it says use film number 120 Kodak film in the yellow box it gets the picture I think that's really cool and then over here we just have the normal um, it has a metal inner so this part is metal, but the outside is a cardboard situation. This part is also, it says, made in USA by Eastman Kodak Company in Rochester, New York, patented in USA, February 1st of 1918. You can see that there. On the inside, once again, nice little cardboard situation all the way around. They were trying to minimize metal use as much as possible, obviously. Um, and there's just a few nails, one on each side here to tack the piece in. And I think that's really interesting. Um, so 
let's go ahead and get started. The main thing I'm gonna use are Armor All Leather Wipes. Now, I know these are for cars, okay? But they work really well for leather or leatherette covered cameras in my experience because they have a conditioning agent. Let's move that aside. They have a conditioning agent or property in them that just really kind of helps to uh, clear up the cameras. So let's just get going here. In some instances, if your leatherette is colored, it can start to take the color off, so you just have to be really careful. But that's just astounding, that difference right there. And I'm just gonna be really careful going under here because these handles, the underside, if you can't tell, is the suede part of the leather, and the top is like the finished side, so I always just kinda try to be careful to clean gently, because I don't want to rip up the, um, the outside. And there's something sticky or otherwise unknown on the outside of this, so we might have to take some rubbing alcohol to it, because it's not coming off with the wipe, which is fine. Um, something I like to do is, if you have a decently long fingernail, I'll wrap my wipe around it to get just around the edge of these handles to try and clean them up as precisely as possible. I'm really gonna try and get as much of the conditioning agent from this wipe into this handle because it is really tragic. And as you can see, um, there's dirt, but these chippings are coming from the suede side of the handle because it's just so uh, old. So you just really have to be careful. Now, moving on, we're just gonna be kind of careful to try and avoid the sticker to the best of our ability. Now, these leather wipes are intended for leather, obviously, and these cameras are covered in a either leather finish or leatherette is what it's called. It's basically just a really thin sheet of leather. Um, not all cameras are, however. Some of them are not covered in a leather. Some of them are uh, plastic finish. So you just kind of need to use your senses and feel the camera and decide what it's made out of. This one, um, A, by the texture of the outside, you can tell. But B, since this one side is frail and falling apart, um, I can just pretty clearly see that it is a leatherette finish. And I'm gonna go ahead and clean in this gunk line as much as I can without further ripping because that would just be great to help it stick later. I'm gonna move on to a different part of my wipe as well. Um, another thing I would add about when you start cleaning these, especially the plastic ones, but somewhat these leather ones as well, just because it's old doesn't always mean it's frail. And by that I mean, you can use a halfway decent amount of pressure or force or scraping or whatever to get some of these hard marks off. As you can see, I'm not necessarily being the most gentle on those little white spots, but the camera is fine as those spots are now gone. So just something to keep in mind. Now with these leather boxes, ten, what I've tended to notice is you don't really have to go over them twice. Um, these wipes pretty clearly pick up the dirt. Um, as long as you use like little circular motions to try and get in on the dirt and get out from all the edges, I'm just gonna go around all the corners here and clean them real quick. Just give them a nice little brush over. 
that, everybody. All right. I'm going to set that part aside and take on this front half. Now, of course, you don't want to touch cardboard with damp fingers because it'll damage it and you don't want to put water or liquid inside of the mechanics of your camera. So be careful about that. But generally, a little wet wipe, as long as you let it properly air out, is not going to do much issue here. Another thing that I will say is that these leathers kind of get a weird stickiness to them when you start using these wipes on them. Not fully sure why, but it goes away once they're dry. I'm thinking it's just like them absorbing whatever moisture is in the wipe. Now there's some black marks on this camera that look like they're deep body marks, as in like they've gone through, yeah like this for sure went through the leather and has hit the back end, so I'm not going to try too hard to get that. Little, little side note, there's a 32 written on the side of this camera which is really cool. Whoever this was before, I, maybe they got it. Well, they would have gotten it in 1930, but kind of cool to think maybe they got it in 32 and wrote the date on it. All right, now it is nice and shiny and damp. And let's do a wipe check. Not too bad. Just a little dirt and brownness, which is actually kind of surprising. All right, so the next thing that I'm going to use is a little bit of a cotton ball. Now, normally I wouldn't do this, but since the interiors of this are cardboard, I'm not going to use uh, rubbing alcohol in them. So I really don't want to ruin the cardboard and have it uh, get too wet. So I'm just going to use this cotton ball and kind of like wipe in all of the corners and things and try and get any uh, dirt out that I can. The next thing we're going to do is, this is for squeezing the snot out of a baby's nose, alright, but I like to use it as an air machine because I don't have compressed air and just blow into the camera. I don't know if you can see, but there's a decent amount of dust and nastiness coming out. Just kind of aim it in and start shooting. Um, if you're trying to do this on a working camera, you should do it upside down like this so that you're not blowing dust further back into the camera as opposed to dragging it out. Now we're gonna move on. We're gonna take a little Q-tip and some rubbing alcohol, isopropyl alcohol, whatever. This one is, uh, is 70. And I'm just gonna take a little, I don't wanna oversaturate this Q-tip. Um, the higher percentage you have, the better. I just happen to have 70, so that is what I'm using. And I'm just gonna tap some of it on my finger to try and minimize the spillage. I'm just gonna go in here and clean this little window out. I'm trying to go in same directional strokes and that is pretty gross. Don't know what the lighting's looking like. It's a little overexposed at the moment. Let's bring it down. Um, yeah, it's a little better. That's pretty gross. And in here as well, I'm just going to do a little spin. Around the edge and that is pretty gross actually. Um, some of that is from the suede inner, but some of that's just gunk. Because now we're going to clean. There's no glass, so I don't know if there was glass at some point, and now there's just not. Oh, there it is. <laughs> Silly me. All right, let's, oh, that's also, it's like way back in there. All right, we're not gonna shove a Q-tip back there. I'm a little scared. Me not knowing the mechanics, it just makes us sketchy. Oh, it's this lens, so we'll go in from the back to get that. 
and that is a lot of nastiness in there. And it's not perfect, but it's cleaner than it was. Same with this part. Could be a little shinier, but good as can be for now. I like to just clean all aspects of these because um, mine are for decorational purposes and I just want them to be clean. I don't much care if they work. Um, of course the working ones I keep in working order and do what I need, but like this for sure should get greased or something because it is definitely too dry. Oh, okay, cool. A whole, I can just take that out. Of course I can. That is how the camera is loaded. But Kodak 120 film. I'm just gonna take that same Q-tip from, I mean, uh, cotton ball from earlier and saturate it with a little bit of rubbing alcohol. And I'm just gonna clean this side and the other because these are both metal and will benefit from the rubbing alcohol. But you don't really want this to hit your leather. I would guess that 32 is there to stay, huh? I try and just get all of my, oh no, I touched the leather. It's not a huge deal, it just will leave the leather a little drier if you do. Um, I'm just trying to get all my strokes in the same direction so when it dries, they're all going one way. So obviously these cameras, as I told you, were given to 12 year olds on their 12th birthdays. So you can imagine they probably got a little beat up, which makes sense why this one is the way it is. That is all the gunk we just got off. That's pretty bad. So, now, here's where it gets a little tricky because I'm scared of this emblem and don't want it to come off. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take just the bare minimum amount of rubbing alcohol onto the edge of this Q-tip. And it is so very minimally damp. I'm just gonna very quickly swipe over it. And I'm gonna try not to hit the edges too much because I don't want anything to get under there and wipe out the adhesive. But that's about as good as that sticker is gonna get. Um, let me just do it all in one direction so that it'll dry nicely. And while that does that, let's move on to our little facets here. We can just take this rubbing alcohol and clean them out. Now, none of my other cameras have like this golden color, brassy color of, uh, of, I guess you would call them, I called them facets, but. Now, this Q-tip barely has any rubbing alcohol left on it at this point, which is why I'm cool with it going on the edge of this, because it will barely even get on the leather and it will go and dissipate real quick. Give that one more twirl, because it is still gross. <sighs> you can clean that up, but there's nothing much there to do with this nail. Or that's not a nail, I guess. That's just for decoration, I suppose. But, as you can see, this part still slightly streaky, but those are kind of just scratches at this point, because that was a pretty good once over. Anything there is just a scratch. Same thing here. The top still looking a little dull because it's cardboard. Same with the inside here. But let's just go ahead and stick it back together. I'm just gonna take this part. Didn't have my pin pulled out far enough. We're gonna stick the pin in first. And use our little black. 
patches. And there it is. The Kodak anniversary camera. And let's just do a little And there it is, all cleaned up, nice and shiny, nice and pretty, and ready to be displayed once I figure out how to fix the leather. I hope you all enjoyed that video. Um, hopefully, you know, you got some insight into the history of this camera and how it worked and its counterparts and all that stuff. Um, it was really fun to clean and restore. Obviously, it was a relatively simple restoration. Um, and I'll have to keep you updated when it comes to that leather handle. But for now, thank you so, so much for watching this video. If you haven't already and you'd like to, hit the subscribe button down below. Become a member of the family. Um, like, comment, share. All those things, you know. Like, you know, share this with your fellow camera nerd or sibling brother whoever you have and yeah let me know what else you would like to see in the future and i will see you all next week with another video deuces